Welcome back, anybody. Um, a while ago, oh, last year, uh, I did a video on the quarter scale, uh, entitled something like the quarter scale is your friend. And recently I got a comment from someone, I, I don't want to mention his name because it was kind of, you know, I thought, gee, not very, not a very nice comment, Rex, but um, it mentioned that uh, he got a little confused listening to what I had to say. I misspoke on a, at least one occasion. And um, so I, I thought to myself, okay, this is one of those uh, grumbly, gussy kind of guys and uh, didn't pay too much attention to it. Well, two or three, four days later, he sends another text and says, you know, a uh, couple of other issues that you had, uh, you used uh, two different scale measurements and confusing and so on. And maybe you should redo the video. And I thought to myself, well, that, that tears it up. I'm going to send him kind of a, a nasty comment back because, uh, again, one of those grumpy Gus type, type of guys. But I thought, why don't I make sure that I'm doing something the right way? And I don't want to get myself into too much trouble. So I decided to watch the video again. And damn, the guy wasn't right. Uh, I'm not going to say that the video sucked, but I will say that it could have sucked a lot less than it did. So what I'm going to be doing, um, thanks to Rex, uh, his fault now that you're seeing this video again. But what I'm going to be doing is trying to, first of all, shorten the video because the last one was, I think, way too long, number one. I'm going to try to be more precise in what I talk about and hopefully uh, all encompassing with just about everything that you hopefully need to know about uh, the quarter scale on a sawmill and how to use it, what to do with it, and so on and so forth. Um, my mill, being a LT40, has what they call, it's a computer setworks system. Uh, they call it SimpleSet. They also make an AccuSet 2. And there's a lot of other companies out there that also have computerized setworks. But I would dare say that the vast majority of portable bandsaw mills out there are manual. And they don't have a computerized anything on them. So the majority of... Uh, the people I'm, I guess I'm trying to reach on this particular video are the manual mill operators. Uh, since you have to do everything by hand, the uh, less you have to do to get your lumber milled, the better it's going to be for you. So uh, that being said, uh, I think um, I should say before we continue, Rex, thank you very much. Uh, I really do appreciate the um, comment. Um, even though I wanted to give you a little bit of a hard time, I hope you take it in good, uh, good whatever. Um, and if you take offense at it, I truly apologize. But um, anyway, uh, moving right along, let's go on to the next thing, which is going to be going mobile. And I'm going to show you a quarter scale and uh, what you can do with it and how it works and so on and so forth. So hold on and here you go mobile. This is the uh, quarter scale that came with my mill. Uh, this is a standard quarter scale, as you can see right there on this side. And on the opposite side is what they call a grade hardwood quarter scale. The difference is on the hardwood scale, the difference between each of the marks is four quarter, five quarter, etc., plus one quarter inch. If you go turn over, the difference between each quarter scale mark is the scale, whatever, plus one eighth of an inch. Uh, generally, me personally, I use the standard. Uh, since most of what I've been doing lately is for my own use, um, it wastes less lumber and I have less work to do in order to finish the board down to something that's usable. So let's put this back where it belongs and uh, we'll get started from there. This is what my scale system looks like on my mill. Over here on the right hand side, I've got the inch scale. On the left is my quarter scale. And as I've mentioned, this is replaceable. Uh, you can see up here, just barely, this is a three quarter scale that I've got um, for cutting three quarter lumber. Uh, now, my personal opinion, and I guess almost everything I'm going to be telling you is my personal opinion, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people out there saying, no, 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 my opinion is something different. 
The one inch scale, in my opinion, should never be moved except when it comes time to calibrate the scale, the inch scale to your actual bunk. So that when you set this at two inches like we are right now and you cut your board, it's two inches thick from the bunk. If you set it at six inches, it's gonna be six inches and not something that's close. So that's very important to me that you don't change this. And if you do, then you've gotta recalibrate the scale all over again. And it's, again, it's a pain in the butt. We interrupt this fascinating video for a little bit of further information on using the inch scale instead of the quarter scale. Uh, quite often I've found that I wanted to cut boards that were less than an inch thick. Uh, and if I use the quarter scale, the thinnest board I can get is usually just a touch over one inch. So what I'll do quite often is I'll use my inch scale and set the pointer at a, an inch mark and make a cut and drop one inch and continue until I'm finished with cutting all the boards I need. And the boards end up being uh, approximately seven eighths of an inch thick. So as you can see here, we're sitting there at the five inch mark and we're going to drop down one inch at a time. Seven eighths of an inch. That board is seven eighths. That board is seven eighths. Now here goes my last cut. Well, as you can see, that last cut is gonna give me a board that's one inch thick instead of seven eighths. So what that really means that you need to do is we're going to go back up to our original five inch mark where I started. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually start right there at the seven eighths inch mark and go down one inch at a time, always ending at the seven eighths inch mark. And each time, since you're moving still an inch, you end up with a board seven eighths of an inch. You do your last cut right there. You're still at seven eighths of an inch and everybody's happy. Only problem is right here, we are so close to the um, bottom part of the uh, can't stops that there's a very good chance we might uh, shave a little bit of the paint uh, or metal off the top. So you gotta be double extra careful around here. But this will at least solve the problem of getting equal boards, including your last board, which is uh, kind of a dangerous thing to do. So um, let us continue with this fascinating video. Problem is I've noticed on a lot of mills, including the old Timber King I had, the inch scale and some number of quarter scale uh, are all on the same magnetic strip and you can't adjust one without adjusting the other which means you throw everything off every time you go to move it. We need to interrupt this video one more time. Uh, I apologize. I know that uh, when you're watching one of my videos, uh, since they're so incredibly fascinating, you don't want to be interrupted for any reason whatever, including a house fire. Uh, we have to do this because I want to make something a little more clear or come up with a, a better idea. If you've got a mill that has a magnetic quarter scale slash inch scale uh, and you don't want to move the inch scale, which again, I recommend you never do that unless you need to calibrate it. If you have a second quarter scale, this magnetic base, uh, all you would need to do is, to, if you need to temporarily relocate your quarter scale, set that magnetic um, quarter scale on top of what you've already got there and adjust it until it's the quarter scale marks are lining up with the pointer like I've got here, except instead of using this quarter scale, use your magnetic, do all of your cuts, then you can remove the quarter scale when you're done and uh, go back to the standard inch and quarter scales. And now we return to the regularly scheduled program. Now on my Wood miser scale here, I found what I consider to be a, a big problem with the scale. Uh, from the factory, this mark that you can barely see up here, I'm gonna call it the zero mark. And on the inch scale, there's the zero mark right there. And there's a little pin here that keeps the quarter scale at the quote unquote proper location. And that hole used to be an eighth of an inch higher than it is. So when I drop the quarter scale down, my zero mark and the inch zero mark were together. And you think to yourself, well, that's perfect, that's great. The problem you run into is if you're cutting, for example, four quarter material and that zero and that zero are together, that four quarter mark 
is going to be at one and an eighth inches uh, on the standard quarter scale, which is what I got right here. Well, the problem you've got is if you're cutting down from quarter scale to quarter scale, you've got inch and a quarter minus rough, I'm gonna say an eighth of an inch for the kerf. And yes, we know that the kerf is not a full eighth inch, but we're going to say that for now. So anyway, you go down here, you go down inch and an eighth minus an eighth for the kerf, blah, 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 blah. You get to here and you're already at an inch and an eighth. And if everything is adjusted properly, your last board is going to be one eighth of an inch thicker than all of the other quarter scale boards that you've cut. So what I ended up doing is I took, drilled a new hole in the support here, put a pin in there. So now that on my four quarter, for example, is right on the one inch mark. My five quarter is at one and a quarter, six, one and a half, so on and so forth. So that it's always where it's supposed to be. And as I'm cutting whatever my quarter scale is that I need, my last board is going to be the same thickness as all of the other boards. So let's move on to uh, how the quarter scale thing works and uh, hang on. So to get started here, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set up this cant to, um, oh, before I go any farther, no matter what you want to say, no matter what you want to think, this is a cant. Uh, even if you don't believe me, it's uh, for this demonstration and this discussion, it's a cant. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so that my one cut, my prime cut, whatever you want to call it, is going to be right through the center of the pith. Remember, this is just for demonstrating, so don't mention about piths and don't cut them and blah, blah, blah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to lower the head until the blade is lined up, centered as perfectly as I can with the pith. We're close. Let's just pretend that that is centered exactly. Um, what I'm going to do now is, so uh, the whole idea behind this is I'm going to want to start cutting at the top and my one cut is going to end up being right at the pith. So I'm going to come up here to my quarter scale and I'm going to raise it until I have a quarter scale mark right there on my pointer. And this is my, the center line here is my pointer. And I'm going to lock this down as soon as I can do that, it's kind of hard to do it one-handed. There we go. So now, all I have to do is I kind of ignore the inch scale, and I only go by the quarter scale, and I'm going to raise the saw head up until I get near where I want to start my cut. And by eyeball, I'm going to say that's it. As you can see, it's not at a quarter scale, so I'm going to drop down right about there. And that's where I can start my cuts. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start this thing and I'm gonna take you guys and uh, park you for a moment so that uh, you don't have to listen to all the noise while the engine warms up and then we'll come back. Now, since I've got uh, computerized set works, I'm gonna set my set works up to drop down one and an eighth inches, which is the distance between marks on my standard quarter scale. If uh, on, your mail, on your mill you have a, uh, if you're manual, then you're going to have to do this by hand, of course. But uh, my set works just makes my life a lot easier. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to watch as we uh, drop down. And here we go. see I made all of my cuts uh, and the last cut that I made for this demonstration is right through the center of the pit which is right where I wanted it to go just to show you and get the eraser out and take care of that so hold on after you've made your initial cuts using the temporarily moved quarter scale, 
you're going to need to take the quarter scale and put it back to its zero mark before you make your final cuts down to the bunk. this second to the last board that I just got done milling. Uh, nuts. Let's see if we can do this. There we go. That's the whole idea behind the quarter scale. Your last cut is your last cuff. You don't have to take a uh, veneer cut, shim cuts, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically your last cut uh, creates your last board. So that's how we do the quarter scale and that is also the end of the butternut. Uh, next up will be probably either birch maybe or a uh, an elm crotch that I've got left over. So we'll see what happens and uh, thank you. I hope this was better than the last one rex i really do uh, if not uh, let me know and i'll try to do it a again so we will talk to you guys later thank you